What's up? It's Melton Metal Anthony with another nasty repair video for you. Today, we're going to be raising this old copper heat exchanger for a grater. The base of it's copper and the flange here is bronze. Let me show you what we got going on. So basically, this is the fitment we need to repair. The customer cleaned it up for me. This is what it looked like originally when he sent me a picture and asked me if I could do it. I thought I was just going to TIG weld this, but I can't because there's already uh, this solder in here, this silver solder that's contaminated it. And uh, also, I'm not really sure how to TIG weld copper to bronze. So we're just going to go ahead and braze it. So basically how this works is hydraulic fluid goes in here, comes out here, and coolant goes in here and out. I've already done a quick test piece because I have, I carry some bronze and some copper in the truck with me. And I've gone ahead and brazed them together successfully, as you can see. Uh, but from what I understand, this is just a little too warm. So I'm gonna cool it down and then I'm gonna do another test here and then we're gonna work our way over to here. So because I've never brazed before in my life, I reached out to my friend Welder Paul on Instagram, right here if you wanna check him out. He's a old host on weld.com and uh, they call him the welding encyclopedia for good reason. There's nothing this man can't weld. So I called him this morning and he suggested that I get some silver solder, some liquid flux and go to work on this thing. He said, if you can, get some test pieces, run a couple of test beads first to make sure that you're doing it correctly. So this is not a how-to. This is a how I'm going to do it, as our friend Icy Weld would say. So come along with me and see if I can get this done. So on Paul's suggestion, he told me to go out, get some acetone, which I had, and get whatever fitment I'm gonna make cleaned up as best as I can. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna clean this thing up with acetone. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see if I can't get a nice bead that has a little bit of a profile and isn't just sucked in the way that is, even though you can see it's it's fairly strong there. I wouldn't imagine this thing can be underneath an immense amount of pressure, but we still want it to be as strong as we can get it. First thing Paul told me to do is to take a little bit of liquid flux and just drop it on there. Drop it into the fitment. And then what I did was, because this kind of wants to run everywhere, I'm just shoving it into the fitment, making sure it gets in there nice. And then we're gonna go ahead and crack our torch. We're gonna heat it up a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead, introduce a little bit more flux to it, and then start introducing our silver solder. This is a 6% silver solder. It also has, I think, tin and a, a limonium or something like that, another element I've never heard of. But because it has all these different things in it, I'm not really sure what it's gonna to do to my lungs, I'm wearing a respirator today. And that's why I'm pre-explaining what I'm doing where normally I would explain it while I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I noticed immediately that my torch shield was entirely too dark. So I just switched over to a regular pair of sunglasses and that seemed to work well enough. Another tip Paul gave me was to make the flame a little acetylene rich rather than oxygen rich so that it wouldn't be as hot. What I'm doing now is just preheating the material. Um, unlike welding, you're not looking to get your base metal molten. What I'm looking to do is just heat it up enough so that it'll suck the solder in. So that's what I'm doing here. And now what I'm doing is I'm just introducing a little bit more flux as was Paul's suggestion. I know I've been alternating between calling this soldering and brazing, but I really don't know what the fuck I'm doing, to be perfectly honest with you. And if you do, leave it in the comments below, okay? If you know whether you'd call this soldering or brazing, just go ahead and let me know. I'd call it soldering, I guess, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The technique I needed to use here is worlds away from welding, in my opinion. Basically, I would need to heat the base metal and then I would jam some of that solder in there, but you couldn't get too close with that solder to the flame because it would just melt to itself, kind of like it does when you're TIG welding aluminum and you get the filler too close and you don't have it in the shielding gas. So I'm not really getting the results I want. I think I'm a little too hot. So what I'm doing now is just readjusting that flame, trying to make it a little more acetylene rich and see what that does for me. For those of you wondering, my acetylene regulator was set at four PSI. My oxygen was set at 40. And in hindsight, that was probably too high on both. 
So I'm just heating it, dabbing it in a little bit, heating it, dabbing it in, and uh, trying to get it to lay in there. But it's getting sucked into the joint. And I think it's because it's such a deep joint and it, it really expands for quite a ways is why it's sucking the solder in the way it is. I think that second one was close to what we needed. It's definitely not perfect, but I'm gonna let it cool down and uh, we'll see what kind of results we got. So upon closer inspection, I'm seeing this little, let me get it to, to focus, this little pinhole right here. And I'm thinking that might be what was leaking. So, I mean, I'll, I'm gonna braze right here too, but I think I need to do this too. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit better. We're gonna get some acetone on it and then I'm gonna give this a whirl. So I'm thinking this is the flame that Paul was alluding to. It does take a little bit longer to preheat the material before I can solder. And uh, if you guys know me, I'm not a patient man. So I do not like to wait for things to preheat. But it seems like the brazing or the soldering game is just kind of a patience game. So if you know how to weld, you know adding more filler material will chill the puddle. So I figured why not braid some of that silver solder together and make it a little bit more filler material and maybe I would get the result I was looking for. So I'm using the torch and the filler to manipulate the puddles. You can see me working that torch back and forth. And what that's doing is kind of pulling the puddle over to the point where I need it. And now I'm just using the filler, putting a little bit more in, working the torch. And that seems to be a good technique. That seems to be what worked for me, at least uh, so far.
So I know it's hard to see from this camera angle, but I'm not really adding any more silver solder. What I'm doing is I'm using the silver solder in my hand to kind of drag around the molten puddle I've created and put it where I want. So what I'm noticing is that some pinholes are opening up in certain areas. And basically what I'm trying to do is shove a little bit more in there, drag the solder around in hopes to seal those up. So I'm starting to see some impurities in my molten puddle. So I just decided to add a little more flux. I don't know if I was helping myself or hurting myself at this point, but we will see. So the new challenge I'm starting to face is that the heat from me trying to get the bottom puddle going is starting to melt the top puddle. So now I'm basically trying to move that flame and keep it into the copper portion of this. You can see me just kind of keep trying to keep it down into the cylindrical portion of this and off the flange. So exactly what I did not want to happen just happened there. The bead fell out. So I think I'm starting to get it. Um, as you can see, I got a pretty good mass put over that and I'm hoping that it got sucked into that little pinhole. There's no way for me to really know. Um, but as you can see, I'm getting a real nice solder right there. I just need to continue that all the way down and then I think we've got this. Okay, so what I've discovered is that I need to get a thicker piece of solder in there. It was just not enough filler material for me to get it correctly. Also, um, dumping a little bit of this on while it's hot seems to make it thicken up and actually give me that flux coating I'm looking to do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this and twist it together like I would do with a uh, copper wire if I was TIG welding copper. This is my first time brazing ever and um, I think it's, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the results as of right now. Uh, but we're gonna heat this thing back up and we're gonna continue to try to solder this thing out. I'm hoping to solve this guy's problem. To solve this guy's problem, I've just stepped my, my game up quite a bit. Um, and I'm sure this is a simple thing for a lot of you guys to do, but I've never soldered a damn thing in my life except for a copper pipe once, uh, which I was successful at. But, yep, let's go ahead and um, hopefully get this. And then real quick, I'm just going to run this, some acetone over this, just to clean this up. So I sped this up a bit, but basically I'm keeping that same technique. What I'm doing is basically just trying to roll that solder over. Once it gets hot, I'm introducing a little more solder, trying to roll it over a little heat, add a little more solder, add a little more heat, add a little more solder, and just kind of get it to roll into the fitment the way I want it to. Okay here, so that's what we've got right now. Um, I'm gonna get a wire brush on that, and I'm just gonna lightly touch it after it cools down just to make sure that there's no pinholes or anything anywhere that I can see. And hopefully we got this thing beat and this guy can put this machine back into service. It's cool, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and just brush her down with this brass wire brush. I went and got a brass one for specifically for this job. Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks real good in my opinion. I don't see any pinholes. As far as I can tell, that's good to go. There might be a pinhole right there. Nope, that was just a piece of shit. Okay, cool. So, if you guys can see, that looks to be a solid braze there. It looks real good. So, yeah, pretty excited for that. So now I'm gonna go ahead, get a hold of the customer, tell him that I think we have a successful braze and see if he'll allow me to film the install and uh, the use of the machine, because I want to see if it leaks. I want to see if my, my work here was successful. 
because, well, this is pretty exciting to me. I've never done this before. I'm uh, pretty proud of myself as of right now, but we'll really see when it gets put to the test. All right, guys, we're gonna see if my first time brazing actually works out. So it's right here. So I believe it was this one, right? The yeah, far exactly. one. So we're gonna see when they start this thing up, if it uh, leaks oil or not. All right, give her a start, man, whenever you... Ready. All right. guys so it turns out I'm just kind of retarded I'm not fully retarded uh, my repair worked so these guys are gonna put this thing back into service and I'll uh, catch you on the next episode if you like what you've seen here today like subscribe share if you didn't like it go fuck yourself if you really liked it go over to my merch store buy a shirt buy a hat do what you can all right guys catch you on the next one